good afternoon and good evening <laughs> welcome back and thank you for being with us again in our health presentation this evening let us all continue to pray for each other and for the swift healing of all who are sick and for protection from sickness for those who are not sick Good evening also, uh, thank you so much for being with us here again uh, this evening. Uh, we thank you for uh, following our uh, programs and uh, some of you might have been with us this morning, 10 o'clock this morning. You see every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning we have uh, this spiritual devotion where uh, we share a message from the Lord. And in the evening we have this, uh, seven at 7 o'clock in the evening we have this uh, presentation. So we are so happy. We thank you for being with us here again uh, this evening. And I hope that you will enjoy our program today. Uh, I would like to uh, let us all continue. Let us all continue to pray for each other uh, during this uh, for swift recovery of those who are affected by this uh, COVID-19 and for God's continuous protection uh, to all of us, for those who are not affected yet. Uh, I'm not saying that we will all eventually be affected, but let's continue to pray for God to continue to protect us so that this virus will not have, uh, uh, will not be able to enter our bodies to be protected. Before we start our program, I would like to invite you to bow our heads for prayer as we seek the Lord. Uh, the Lord's help and guidance and blessing this evening. Okay? Father God, you are the God of all people. You are the God of the rich. You are the God of the poor. You are the God of the healthy. And you are the God of the afflicted. You are the God of health care. And you are a God of all the uninsured as well. You are the God of the hoarders, and you are the God of the helpers. Please help us during this time, uh, during these times of this COVID-19 pandemic. Please continue to be our refuge and our strength. We trust you, and we'll, we're going to we're steadily, we're going to continue uh, depending on your promises. And this evening we're going to study uh, why we must continue to trust you. Please give us your, please grace us with your presence, with your guidance and your blessings as we study your word and about you this evening. I ask all this favor in Jesus' holy name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Again, before we start our program, I would like to... Uh, uh, we'd like us to set up our minds for our study. Uh, we'd like to invite our singers to render to us a beautiful message. <laughs>
Thank you so much for that uh, beautiful music. Uh, it's about God. We're going to study about uh, God this evening. Because if you will remember, we have been uh, studying the last few uh, Saturdays, uh, the last few Sabbaths, we've been studying about uh, the eight laws of health. Do you remember the eight laws of health? The eight laws of health, let us review them. Uh, the uh, new start, that's the eight laws of health, are all embodied in the uh, two simple words, new start. Uh, N is for nutrition, E is for exercise, W is for water, and S is for sunshine, T is for uh, temperance, A is for air, and last Saturday we studied about uh, rest, rest, which is also very important uh, to make us healthy for our bodies. And uh, this evening, we're going to study the last portion of the eight laws of health, which is trust. Trust in God, or in other words, trust in God. That is the most important of all the different topics of studies that we have. So we're going to study that God has taught us. You see, God is the engineer of our bodies. He was the one who designed our bodies. He was the one who created us. And he was the one who put us into existence. Uh, so we're, we are a product of his creation. You know, if you buy an automobile, uh, the, the seller of the automobile will usually uh, provide you with a manual to uh, teach you how to maintain that automobile so that it will last long and uh, it will not give you as much problem uh, as possible and uh, so that it will be in a good operation order for a long, long time. Now, we, uh, God also gave us a manual. The, in our manual, He gave us these eight laws of health, nutrition, exercise, uh, not, uh, new start, water, uh, temperance, uh, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest. And today we're going to study about trust in God. So with all this uh, information that God has revealed to us in his uh, health manual for us to be healthy, can we trust God? Uh, should we trust God? First of all, we let us study about God. Who is God? Should we trust him? And uh, trust, let me first define to you the meaning of trust. Trust is a firm belief in the reliability, in the truth, and ability or strength of someone or something. So it is having a full belief, full reliability, and uh, for the uh, reliability of truth and ability of the one that we trust uh, to be able to perform what he said he's going to perform. So should we trust him? Because God gave us Jesus to pay for our sins and give us eternal life, we can trust him. That is one reason. Uh, because of Jesus, he gave us uh, uh, life again. Because otherwise, because of sin, we're supposed to all be dumb. Uh, God is completely just. He's the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are justice. justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity is just and upright. That's according to his holy book, Deuteronomy 32, 4. And trust in the Lord, according to Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. It's very good if somebody is directing our path, because if we are just on our own, it's, uh, we are uh, uh, liable to make mistakes and a lot of mistakes if we don't have any guidance from uh, anybody or even or especially from God. Now why should we trust God? Because God, God is a rock, a solid rock. And let me give you some reasons why we should trust God. God's word is true. One, God does not lie. That's the only thing that God cannot do, to tell a lie. God can do everything but he cannot tell a lie. God never changes, and 
his uh, in his being. God never changes in his mind. God never changes his plans or purposes. God has never failed to fulfill his word. God is sovereign over all things. God is infinitely wise. God is faithful. God is infinitely loving. God gave his son for us. God is completely just. God has wonderful plans. God will make you like Christ. God is infinitely good. God is always good to his children. God will never leave you. God cares for you. God will never let you go. God is with you. See? So that is the character of God. And see, God gave us a laws. And the laws that God gave us represents himself also. It represents his character. Let me just go to that and uh, and uh, review the character of God. Let me just show you the character of God. Here are the characters of God. Uh, he gave us a law, and the law is his character. God is good. God is good. The law of God is also good. According to a different text or uh, provide uh, proof about them. Evidence. God is uh, holy. The law is holy. God is perfect. Something fell by the other. Thank you. God is perfect. The law is perfect. God is pure. The law is pure. God is just. The law is just. God is true. His law is true. God is spiritual. His law is spiritual. God's law is unchangeable. God is eternal. And God's law is eternal. He's talking about the law of God. The moral law of God. The Ten Commandments. Everything that says in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make idols, or worship idols, or serve them. Thou shalt not uh, bear full witness. Thou, uh, on the they, they are all characters of God that uh, he wants us to feel that is more sort of a sacred place or uh, more confined. But in Saturday afternoon, we try if the, if, if the weather permits, like today, which is nice and sunny out here, we like to be out in nature. We like to do that. That's why we travel a lot also, because we like to be uh, in, in uh, we like to be in nature. See, here, I love this place because of so many trees. We have so many trees around here. And when I look at these trees, I can always picture a loving God. The trees, the sunshine, the uh, singing of the birds, that's why this tree here, I like this tree here because the fruit that grows here, there are, there are only so many birds here coming to eat this fruit and they also sing beautiful music for us. When I look at the heaven, the heavens during the starry night, when I see big beautiful gigantic mountains, oceans, trees and beautiful lakes and the way they were laid out for my eyes to appreciate them and to enjoy looking at them. There's got to be a very powerful being responsible for all these things. I don't know about you, but that is always what comes to my mind. Somebody must be responsible for all these things. And they reflect a loving God. When I observe a person's face, you see, if you look at a person's face, it's only about maybe 8 to 10 inches in diameter. But... I have never seen, in all our travels, from the time I was born, I have never seen, I have never met two human beings or two persons who look, whose face look exactly alike, who, whose pattern of their face is also what I mean, whose face, everything is exactly alike. No. You see, I was just imagining, or I was just thinking, if it's, if it's not uh, God who created us, if it's a, just a human being, even the best artist in the world, if he tries to make those faces of different people, in less than, than a hundred faces, he will tend to duplicate some faces. He will run out of imagination. But look at our creator. With all the faces, there's nobody. No two faces look exactly alike. So, see uh, how... how uh, how, how uh, great he is, how mysterious his ability to make things are. 
Well, what is the what is what did God? And we also we are also controlled by time in this earth. But what did God use to measure time? He used uh, days. For example, one rotation of the earth around the sun. He called it. It's in about 365 days, which we call one year. So we learned man with his knowledge. He learned how to measure time. But uh, the Bible also uh, tells us how the earth uh, began. How it began. It began during its creation. And uh, he created uh, everything here according to the holy book. He created the earth in six days. But he said that on the seventh day, he stopped his work. He rested, not because he was tired, but because he would like to make that day special. It's special. He looked at how good his creation was, and he made he blessed the day, and he made it holy. He did not bless. He did not do that to the, all the other days, because uh, if he made, and I'm happy that he did not do that, because if he made all the other days holy, we will not have uh, any more a day or time to be able to do our work, to be able to uh, find means for our livelihood. But the seventh day is special. And we should not, uh, what you call, uh, uh, we should not exchange that seventh day holiday to another day, because he specifically he specified that that seventh day is the one that he has chosen to be holy. If you read Ezekiel 46:1, the seventh day is very different. If you see uh, Ezekiel 46:1, it says that that Sunday is not a holiday. Sunday is a working day. Monday is a working day. Tuesday is a working day. Wednesday is a working day, Thursday is a working day, and Friday is a working day. Because he said, it says there that the church, the place where people gather, should be closed during the six working days specified. But on the Sabbath, it has to be open because his people will be gathering to worship him. So, and he said, he told us how this earth began, and he also told us how it will end. According to uh, the Bible, his, uh, his manual, this earth with everything, all the nice things, all the good things that he has done, it will come to an end. And the ending of this earth is it will burn. That's why it is not good to put all our minds, all our efforts uh, per, uh, in this earth, even uh, put our minds in riches or whatever, because this earth will all be burned and we cannot take anything with us. And if we decide to love this earth the world too much like what he said do not love the world neither the things of the world because because the things of the world are lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and pride of life and if we put our minds and hearts in this world we love the world too much when this earth burns we will be burned together with this earth that's what it says but for his people for those who obeyed him and the reason why the, this earth will be destroyed because this earth had been conquered by his enemy, by Satan. That's why the enemy, uh, Satan, will also be burned together with this earth. He disobeyed God. But the hell, the burning place, which we call hell, is not intended for us. If you read Matthew 25, 41, it says that hell was intended, is intended for the devil and his angels. But those who do not obey God, and they decide and decide to obey the this enemy, the devil instead, they will all go with the devil on that place of burning when the time comes that this place is burned. See? So uh, God gave us a, a loving God, that's why he gave us a cho choice. He wants us to be happy. So if you're not happy with God, because he's, it seems like he, uh, he has uh, so many rules that makes us good people, and we would like to obey the devil instead, because in the devil it seems to be too much fun, but that fun is only short-lived, because the consequence of that is burning together with, uh, with uh, the, his enemy, with Satan. And so I was talking about the measure of time. One rotation of the moon around the sun is what you call one, a period, uh, one rotation of the moon of the earth around the uh, sun is one year, 365 days. One rotation of the moon around the earth is called one month, and that is about about approximately 30 days. And another measure of time is 
uh, so it was always measured by days. But then there's the question of uh, the week, the seven days week. Where did that seven days week come from? See, the one rotation, the one rotation of the earth around the sun is 365 days. The moon is about 30 days, one rotation of the moon, are, uh, of, of the moon around the earth. But how about the week? Where did, where did that week come from? That week, you see, many people try not try to disobey God, try to go away from the Bible. So they try to invent a week, 10 days. It did not work. So scientists said, let's try uh, 20 days, call it a week. It didn't work. Let's try five days. Try, try to get away from God. Try not to to get away from the Bible. When they got frustrated because nothing of not one of them worked, they decided why don't we just go along with the Bible. So they went along with the Bible and cooperate and uh, just agreed with God's creation of the seven days week and it worked. So the week is seven days. So no matter how smart, how wise we become, we cannot go away from God. We still need Him. We still need Him. The wisest person on the earth, they need God. And the wisest person in the Bible.